hello welcome to my channel where I review scientific articles and sometimes make fun of them sometimes talk to you about new things I learned so today we're gonna talk about something that I find pretty cool we're gonna deposit silver nanoparticles onto different services and center them using plasma so let's get right on to it this is published in American Chemical Society applied materials and interfaces and this paper talks about atmospheric pressure and ambient temperature plasma jet sintering of aerosol jet printed silver nanoparticles. So if you want the summary, here it is. They take a printed thing on different surfaces, including skin and tomatoes and oranges and different plastics. They take silver nanoparticles or inkjet printed and sinter them using plasma. And after 30, 40, 50 minutes of sintering, heat resistance goes yeah, very low. So it's very cool. Done. Those of you interested in details, let's stick around. So let's get to it. In the past decade, interest has surged in developing materials and techniques for manufacturing flexible electronics. I'm still questioning the whole flexible electronics thing. I see some people embedded in their skin and all that. I guess there's future in it. Somehow we're all becoming a little sideboard, one step at a time. So in this paper, they review or they present aerosol jet printing that's centered using atmospheric pressure plasma. So in this AJP method, the printable ink is first aerosolized using pneumatic or ultrasonic atomizer. Ah, let's go to the picture. They have a really nice picture. This is the whole process. So they create aerosol somehow of these uh, nanoparticles in a solvent. They use sheath gas, nitrogen in this case, I guess, to guide these particles and move the head around to print. Just the basic inkjet printer, fancy one. Then they put that in a controlled chamber with infrared camera behind the glass. Then they use atmospheric pressure, argon, jet, to center the particles on the substrate and they look at the temperature of the substrate from behind. So here they're showing highest glowing light of 45 degrees Celsius. And they can deposit it on leaves and tomatoes. And here is uncentered and centered after 100 minutes. Cool. All right, let's see. The stabilizing agent, which in this case is uh, polyvinyl chloride, PVC, ranges from 100 to 200 degrees Celsius and to achieve sintering the temperature needs to be even higher so that's you know three four hundred degrees Celsius that's pretty hot you can't really put a tomato in that not for a long time anyway various sintering methods have been developed including laser photonic sintering plasma sintering and others there's a plasma spark where plasma is thermalized as in it's in thermal equilibrium which means very hot so spark is not good Non-thermal plasmas are very cool because they're out of equilibrium where temperature of electrons is very high, thousands of kelvins, tens of thousands of kelvins, and temperature of the rest of the gas is neutral. So you can apply this plasma to a tomato without damaging it. So the authors claim that in their case, low temperature sintering is presumed to be driven by energetic plasma species mobilizing the surfaces of nanoparticles rather than a heating effect. Kind of, sort of, beg to differ, but let's look at the details. I'll talk about my questions in a minute. Interesting, the authors say the advantage of us utilizing plasma systems and sintering is their adaptability for high quantity processing without requiring synthesizing or washing steps to adjust specific amount of chemicals and solvents. Yep. You can put an atmospheric pressure plasma on a conveyor belt, but these guys keep it in the chamber for an hour. Controlled atmosphere chamber. That's also kind of problematic, but they can put a tomato in there. So there are advantages, there are disadvantages, science, research, development. So in this study, the authors show that the substrate temperature from the back, from behind the thing, the substrate temperature can be maintained below 50 degrees Celsius by turning plasma on and off. And we'll see that in the picture. And again, they mention that they can demonstrate this sintering on the ripe tomato, leaf, 
flexible plastic with no apparent damage. No apparent damage. No apparent damage. So it didn't really look, but those are details. So they use an Argon plasma jet flowing through a tube at 1.5 liters per minute. So that's 1.5 liters per minute of Argon for an hour. Adds cost to the process. And they fill the chamber with nitrogen. I'm assuming to prevent oxidation of the nanoparticles. The authors are using 7.5 kilovolt peak-to-peak -peak sinusoidal voltage at 50 kilohertz, pretty high frequency, resulting in 6 to 12 watt of power deposited into plasma. So that's roughly 10 watt over an hour going onto a tomato surface. That's not small energy. They also analyzed their plasma, showing that, yep, it's plasma. Details and the supporting information, of course, I'll link all of this down in the description below. Speaking of, click that little subscribe and little bell icon. And they show that in 20 minutes, the resistance of the printed film reduced over six orders of magnitude. Pretty cool. So yeah, let's look at this graph. So in the first 20 minutes, we have on both glass and very similarly on the plastic film, they have a very significant drop in resistance, slowly going down almost to zero in 100 minutes. And I thought this is a little mistake. Ohms divided by a little box so I was about to make fun, but then I started Googling this and apparently this is a unit that's used ohms per square. So this is, the units of that are ohms, but this is resistance of a thin film. So that's very cool. I learned something new, very unexpectedly. The authors think, claim, that the initial rapid drop of the sheet resistance is likely due to removal of surfactants in ink by energetic plasma ions and electrons that dissociate chemical stabilizers. Perhaps, or perhaps you're dumping lots of energy onto the first atomic layer of the ink, thermally centering it without heating the, the surface below. Tomato is a very good heat conductor and plasma is putting energy only at the surface. So I would argue this could potentially be similar to laser centering, but I digress. I'm not entirely sure. And again, the authors measure temperature behind. And speaking of temperature, it's right in this picture here. So what they're doing is they're turning plasma on and off and on and off and on and off and on and off. And they're measuring temperature, again, using infrared camera from the back of the substrate. So they're measuring what the camera thinks is the temperature of bulk film that is being centered, not exactly the temperature at the very, 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 very surface of that film. I would argue that that temperature could be very, very high, but I don't know. And I don't know how to measure that. That would be very tricky, I would think. We tried to measure that with human skin and it turned out to be pretty difficult. They confirmed their claim that this is not thermal. They stuck the sample into an oven at 300 Celsius for two hours and got similar conductivity. And then they took the same oven, put it at 50 degrees for 100 minutes and the samples were non-conductive. I don't know if that's the right control for this. Maybe laser centering would be a better control for this, but I'm not sure. I have some questions about this study. This is a beautiful study, very interesting, excellent results. Some questions. So in summary, authors claim that plasma jets or similar non-thermal plasmas have emerged. I would say are emerging as promising candidates for roll-to-roll -roll processing of value-added materials. Please continue this research. This is very awesome. We're doing something similar, hopefully publishing soon. And I really like that authors say printed pattern on a silicon substrate attached to human skin during plasma sintering. Cool. Can we go direct on the skin? I'm sure a lot of people would like that. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining me for this short review. Excellent, excellent work by the authors in American Chemical Society Journal. Uh, please subscribe, click the little bell icon, and I'll see you in the next review. Take care. Thank you.